not seeing a whole lot of blue, but there is some. We can still bring some friends. We have a lot of them up here. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was told yesterday that um, they wouldn't come up if we had a lot, but there's always room. If we have to move us into the choir and put all the microphones there, that's what we will do. There's Amen. always room up here on the stage. Amen. You want to join? Come on up. So if everyone would like to please stand and help us with this. We will have no music for this. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way in Shelway, the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Thank you. 
forget Monday, 6.30, Strong Sister Fellowship. Um, also Men's Bible Study Friday at 8 o'clock. Um, Saturday's movie, um, God's Not Dead, I think it's 4. Amen, 5. 5. Uh, wheels are turning at 3.30 if you want to ride in the van. Let me see what else we got here. Also, the food pantry. They need a lot of food back there, folks. Really? And also, I got a list of stuff here. Um, so, located a lost Bible and a phone last Sunday. If somebody lost it, it could see Ms. Wanda. The nominating committee will be meeting um, Sunday the 22nd, and immediately following worship service about the 20 to 2025 committee. Uh, the, there will be a boring round for the church. We're checking out the damage that's done here. And you see. Fall Festival, they're having a meeting on the um, 6th of October, following the service. And they're inquiring about the um, Merit's Christmas box, shoe boxes for the children. And I think that was all she gave me. <laughs> um, if the gentleman comes up here for the um, offering, please. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank the Lord for allowing us to be at the church, Lord. Thank you that we can be in a country that we can hopefully work with you, Lord, and praise your name, Lord. At this time, Lord, we'll take up a small amount that, we, that you gave us, Lord, that we may further your kingdom and do your work. In Jesus' name, let me pray. Amen. Amen.
turn over two pages to page 438. We'll sing all three verses of Heaven Came Down. <laughs> Yes. Video person. <laughs> 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 
tem tempo. Mini lesson on, on when they start school about how you want to treat other children. 
children in your classroom, they might never have been to Sunday school or church before. So I try to um, go with the kindness and, and get them to understand that everyone's not the same background that they are. And then lastly, any final thoughts on encouraging folks to consider attending uh, your class or participating in any of the other classrooms that Green Park will do? Well, just come and try it out. I know the adults have several different classes. Uh, try them out. If you've tried them before, try them again. Uh, yes. You might find something that you're, uh, that you're wanting. If you have children and they're first and second grade, I would love to work with them. I uh, find it very refreshing and very honest. Well, there you have it, folks. Another reason to consider coming to Green Pond Sunday School, the awesome and wonderful teachers that give them their time. We just pray that we'll have a great time together. Thank you for watching. Uh, for those of you who do not know, Kevin is our Sunday School Director. And we greatly appreciate the work that he does for us. And we just want to encourage anybody that's not currently uh, attending a Sunday school class, I just have one thing to say. Oh, brother, where are you? Some of you will get that. Some of you can explain it to the rest. But we are thankful to have a strong Sunday school program. We're so thankful for those that are now giving up their time to make a, a van route possible. And what a blessing it is to have these kids come. They're excited. They're uh, wanting to learn and grow. And what better way? than to do that. So I would encourage you to bring your children and thank you again for entrusting them while we share God's word with them each and every week. Thank you to each teacher that serves and prepares and gives of your time. You are very valuable to this church. And I know it's not said enough, but thank you and God bless you. Amen. We're gonna, at this time, I'm gonna ask Miss Jackie to please join me. We're gonna recognize um, a student that had uh, really, really good uh, attendance, and, and we're going to recognize her at this time. Okay, um, I want to recognize Athena. Come on, Athena. Thank you. 
questions for you guys, and then I'll pray for you. Uh, first of all, when you got a boo-boo, you can just scream out your answers. Who did you go to, mom or dad? When you get a boo-boo, I hear mom. To the hospital. To the hospital? You've <laughs> <laughs> been taught well, my brother. Um, when you get sick, to whom do you go? Home. Home? That's a good idea. There's this person who wears a white coat. Where do you go? Doctor. There you go. When you see your mom or dad leave in the morning, where are they usually going? Work. And what are they going to work for? Money. <laughs> good answer. What do they buy with the money? Food. Food. <laughs> takes a lot of money to buy food nowadays, so it takes a, a lot of work. And so here's my point. The Bible says that Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And if you look around at the world, everything is supporting life. Hospitals heal people. Parents keep you safe and give rules so that you'll stay safe. Grow. And even when money is not spent on food and spent on entertainment, that's to give you an abundant life, to make life enjoyable and pleasurable. Dad, I, go, I go to parties, straight to poppy. You go straight to poppy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, whoever heals your boo-boo or helps you feel better is okay. So the point is, God intended life to be lived. He gave us life, and it's to be protected. And if you look at all the support systems around us for life, everything that helps us with life, it's obvious that God wants us to live. And so I ask you to grow up respecting life, appreciating life. When you get old enough to vote and stuff, you'll understand all of that stuff. Our adults understand that. But life is important, and protecting life is important. And rules are about keeping you safe and happy. Let's pray together. Father... Thank you for these precious young people. Lord, they've been through a lot of things that have, we adults have heard on the news recently. And I just ask you to give them peace in their hearts. Let them know that you're here to protect them. Lord, bless them as they go to school. May they feel safe to learn and grow. And may they understand rules or to help them stay safe. Bless them and take care of them. Thank you that these adults are praying for them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're awesome. You're dismissed. Well, no, no. special music. <laughs> <laughs>
May that faith always be in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And may others see it, hear it, and come to believe it because of the influence of this great church. In Jesus Christ's name, hide me behind the cross. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> There was this fellow who took his second day of work, from work, off of work, and his wife said, Honey, you were off yesterday. What are you going to do today? <laughs> he said, Nothing. She said, Well, you did nothing yesterday. He said, Well, I didn't get finished. <laughs> And so here's the question. If you're off work, who does your work? <clears throat> Let me ask you a bigger question. If Moses never lived, if his parents would have obeyed and allowed him to be killed, what do you think that would have done to the faith? Now, I know this is hypothetical, and I know God's not going to let any of that change, and God's plan worked out, but what do you think the world would be like? What do you think the church would be like without the story of Moses? I would just say God would have replaced it, but without it, we would understand much less fully the gospel of Jesus Christ. We wouldn't understand the context. We would not understand what God went through progressively to reveal to us what Jesus Christ was going to accomplish on Calvary. And you can take that a step further. Name another of your favorite people in the Bible. What if their story never came to pass? What if they never existed? Let me take it a step further. I'm grateful that you allowed me to finish as a chaplain resident. I learned so much that's beneficial not only to my heart but to other people's lives. People have great laments and they come out in the hospital. I was talking to Brother Bull when I came in this morning. His brother-in-law is at Moffitt with a serious brain tumor that they can't do anything about. And so here is my point. Where would the world be if everybody chose to kill their children? Where would the world be if Mary gave in to the pressure of being a virgin young lady who was pregnant? Where would we be? Let me name some things that we fuss at God about, but if we as a human race would have defended life the way it deserves to be defended, may have been solved. Right. Amen. Maybe the person, maybe a lady who would have found a cure to every cancer has been aborted and never had a chance. It's not God's fault. Maybe the person who would provide world peace he had such leadership, he would have been elected, and there would not be so many uh, political fights. Right. Maybe he got aborted. Amen. That's right. What about the person who was aborted who could have brought insight to Alzheimer's? Right. And so let me pose to you that faith should be aggressive. When we think of aggression, we think of something negative. I'm speaking of the definition for aggressive that means to be emotional, passionate, and take initiative about accomplishing things that God would want us to accomplish. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 11, we learn that faithful Christians, Christians who have extreme faith, aggressively protect Infants. I want to read something that comes from our women's center, our crisis pregnancy center, an email that was sent out to me. So I want to read it to you about an amendment that will be on our ballot 
This comes from Rebecca Klein, a woman's choice ministers. And the only choice they promote is life. And, and by the way, politics said women don't have choices, and so we should allow them to have the choice of abortion. Listen, women do have the choice not to do the things that get them pregnant, so they won't be in a crisis situation. Amen. Now, there's rape and incest, and we need to be sensitive Amen. and minister with soft hearts. But the majority of abortions are simply birth control abortions. And so she writes, the November ballot will include Amendment 4 entitled Amendment to Limit Government Interference with Abortion. The goal of this amendment is to enshrine abortion in the Florida State Constitution. It's heartbreaking that such an amendment will be on our ballot, and we urge our friends for life to vote no on 4. We also ask you, please share this message with everyone you know. Did my part, I shared the message. Amen. So faithful Christians aggressively protect infants. We often get the image that a Christian should be weak, passive, and never take any stand for anything. The world is trying to redefine male leadership in a way that allows the evil to outdo the good. What about Jesus? He turned over the money changers' tables with a whip. I don't think he was very passive about the things that God was passionate about. So verse 23, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents, because they saw he was a beautiful child. Let me define beautiful. Anything God creates. Right. Especially the parents. And if you come to me and tell me you're pretty good, I'll say, I'm glad you're good. I don't necessarily agree with the pretty part. <laughs> but your mama does. <laughs> so go ahead and say it. <laughs> because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Listen, the one we should be afraid of is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's right. They put him in the river with the alligators of crocodiles over there. And God spared him. And you know that story. But faithful Christians aggressively protect infants. Therefore, we do have the story of Moses. <clears throat> we almost did it. But factoring God's sovereignty, we do. Thank God for Moses and Moses' parents. Faithful Christians aggressively protect identity. One thing I learned by marrying my uh, precious wife, by the way, Salisa, look at me. There is a superstar teacher for tomorrow night's strong women's meeting, Miss Salisa. Amen. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> But what I learned from her family and from the home church where I surrendered to be a deacon and then surrendered to be a pastor is that we represent God Almighty. He is our identity. We have the anointed one's name, Christian, on our backs. And so what Salisa's family would tell her and they would tell the youth group as the pastor of the church, know who you are and know whose you are. In other words, represent God when you go away to this youth camp. Don't go up there and act like a bunch of heathens. You're representing Greenbrier Road Baptist Church. You're representing God Almighty who saved you. So faithful Christians aggressively protect our identity. Verse 24 of Hebrews 11. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. There's a lot of advantage in that. Could you imagine being raised in the White House with all the privileges and the opportunities that come with living with a famous family? Uh, Pharaoh, he was in charge of Egypt. But Moses chose a different route. He said, no, I'm a man of God. 
And I have a mission from God. And I will face danger from others to accomplish that mission. He knew his identity, and we need to know who we are. We are soldiers of the cross. Sometimes that makes and causes great sacrifice. But the benefit and the fruit produced for God's glory is worth it. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Faithful Christians aggressively protect influence. I'm going to make a statement here. Please bear with me. It's often attributed to Mother Teresa. I don't know if she's the original source. But the statement was made, witness all you can, and if necessary, use words. Wrong, wrong, wrong. And here's what I mean. If you witness with your life, and you never tell anybody, my life is this way because Jesus Christ changed this life, then you're just bearing witness to your own self and self-righteousness. That old Jim's a pretty good person. Look at that video he made about Sunday school in Miss Jackie's class. And he is a good person because of Jesus. And he'll tell you a lot faster than I will. We must use words. We must tell them that Jesus changed our life. Well, Pastor, I don't know what to say. I don't know what they're going to ask me. Welcome to the crowd. <laughs> but in a couple of weeks, we'll give you some... We'll, we will equip you. We'll start with gift evangelism. If you can spell gift, G-I-F-T, then you can tell somebody else about Jesus in a way that they want to receive it. You can tell them about the greatest gift that's ever been given and how they can have it. So our influence is vital. Notice verse 25. Choosing rather, Moses did, to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. I'm going to try to get this right, quoting my father-in-law again. Sin is pleasurable for a season. But sin will take you longer, farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you so much more than you want to pay. But if you tell somebody about Jesus and you've lived a life in front of them that's not perfect, nobody's ever going to be perfect, but it shows them that you consistently bring your child to Sunday school, that's going to last for eternity. That's laying up treasures in heaven. Now that's using our influence, that's protecting the influence that we have so that others can have the opportunity to have Jesus. Faithful Christians aggressively protect integrity. When I was surrendered to ministry, one of the first Bible commentaries I had was by uh, Warren Wiersbe. It's called the To Be Series. And he recently wrote a book, if I'm not mistaken, called The Integrity Crisis. Which means people aren't being who they claim to be. Integrity is when your outside lines up with what's on the inside. And when we claim to be a child of God, our integrity is on the line and in danger of being questioned when we don't live consistently with whom we claim to be. And so we faithfully, aggressively protect integrity. Verse 26, Moses, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Moses didn't buy the lie that earthly treasures would bring fulfillment. He knew serving God, even at the danger of his life, would bring fulfillment. Too many of us in the church, and I'm not saying you, I'm thankful for how faithful you are, are chasing fool's gold. 
looks like it's going to work, it looks like it's going to make you happy, but it never satisfies. The only thing that will ever satisfy a Christian is living for Jesus Christ. Amen. You could say it's coming to life. Remember our new slogan? Living intentionally for eternity for Jesus. If you want to do that, then come to life at Green Pond Baptist Church. Faithful Christians aggressively protect integrity. Faithful Christians aggressively protect inspiration. What is our inspiration? All scripture has been given by inspiration of God. I'm thankful for Dr. Nussbaumer doing a class on what you need to understand the Word of God. And make sure you preserve it and make sure you respect it as God's Word. And not just any old thing that's added in or, or taken out. Faithful Christians aggressively protect inspiration. The end of verse 26 and then into 27. For he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Remember, faith is saying it so when it isn't so. So it's so because God said so. <laughs> Remember last week, Abraham went out never visibly seeing the promised land. The only thing he needed was the fact that God promised. And it was going to come to pass. And by the way, if you want to bless me, bless my children. And so the greatest blessing for Abraham started with one child. And that one child grew in multitude. As a matter of fact, in this circumstances that in the circumstance that Moses was in, Abraham's family were in a famine. And so they had to go down to Egypt, where the one who was sold out almost killed Joseph, was there to protect them. And they began to grow so large in population in the land, the new Pharaoh got intimidated by them. And so he ordered all the kids to be killed. The Jewish children. And that's what his family was protecting Moses from. Verse 28. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And we know we're, we're an educated church. You know what the sprinkling of the door over the doorpost foreshadowed? Foreshadowed Jesus hanging on that old wooden cross. Not staying dead, but rising again. And the death angel, the eternal death angel, is going to pass over us. It don't seem like it, does it, Brother Bo? You're going in and looking at your father-in-law, uh, your brother-in-law suffering. And all of us have been there, one way or another. But oh, sweet people, it's true. It's true. It is true. There is a heaven. Yes. There is a place that God's going to bring us out of. Thanks for singing about it. Amen. Comes from the inspired, objective truth of the Word of God. This bumper sticker says, God said it, I believe it, therefore it's true. And that's wrong too. God said it, therefore it's true. Are you looking for your reward? We have to live backwards as Christians, don't we? Or it's not a bad idea. You know, on that day, anybody watch the Olympics or any of it? I didn't even watch the introduction, so I don't know what it was all about. I just know it was ungodly and Amen. unnecessary. That's right. That's right. But they did have the awards handed out. One of these days, in the Bema seat of judgment, God's going to hand out awards to Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you for being a man brave enough to lead worship and sing in front of a lot of people. Yeah. Makes us uncomfortable sometimes, don't it, James? 
Women, you're, you're a lot better at it, but it still makes you uncomfortable, something nervous. And when God, uh, we stand before God on that judgment day and He burns away everything that was done out of false motive and we get the crown of life and we get the, the awards, you know what I'm going to do? Lay them at Jesus' feet. Amen. Say, if you hadn't have saved me, I would have been good for nothing. Nothing of any eternity. I'm inspired by the true message from the true book. Otherwise, I couldn't make it. So I have to live from the end and live backwards to what I'm doing now. If that's God asking what anyone wants me to do to change the message. <laughs> He's good. Number six. Sorry. Faithful Christians aggressively protect inabilities. Now, an inability is different than a disability, and let me explain what I mean by that after reading verse 29. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. There are images everywhere, haven't read it yet, but there's new evidence of the Red Sea crossing. In the words of the superb, famous theologian, Gomer Powell, <laughs> go all the way. God told the truth after all, the Bible's true. Yes, sir. Remember the inability Moses had? God, God, I don't think that was really his issue. I don't think stuttering was his issue. This is my own personal opinion. Take it for whatever it's worth, which is not a whole lot. I think he was caught between the Egyptian language and the Hebrew language. And so he was struggling to make the translations there. And when he talked, he talked a little slowly to move back and forth. My personal opinion. That's why Aaron, God said, okay, let Aaron go with you. Look at me closely. Nobody's all that, but everybody's all this. Nervous at times, anxious at times. When God calls us to a new thing, Saturdays make you a little nervous. The man's got a PhD, so he was he wasn't too bad about it. But it's not about what we can and can't do. Well, it is about what we can't do. So like, God, I can't. And that's what he's waiting for. He takes over, equips you, empowers you. Listen, if a 58-year-old man is able to speak to you for 30 minutes, but when he was in class in the fourth or fifth grade, can't remember now. I wet my pants because I was afraid to even ask the teacher to go to the restroom. Mm -hmm. Wet my pants in class. If God can bring me up here to talk to you for 30 minutes about the Bible. He can equip you to do anything He calls you to do. Amen. Even if you're alone in the fire like Stephen Davis was.
Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There was another in that fire. And that fire didn't touch them. But if it did, if it burned them to ashes, God is still faithful. They would have transitioned right on into heaven. And God will equip us if we will be aggressively available. Available to protect infants. Available to protect our identity in Christ. Available to protect our influence for Christ. Available to protect our integrity and our witness for Christ. Willing to trust this as the inerrant, infallible Word of God in its original manuscripts. And to say, I can't do it, only you can. That way he gets the glory. Remember what Paul bragged about? His weaknesses. And when he talked about his accomplishments, his resume, he said, I count this all a, a trash heap when it comes to pursuing Jesus. Well, let's pray together. <clears throat> Father, thank you for a church that is faithfully aggressive. Father, we don't want to be obnoxious in the way we do things. We want to do things in a way that would honor you. But help us to be motivated to be aggressive for the kingdom's sake. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that can be done by many individuals surrendering their life to Jesus. Father, today there may be someone to, who needs to admit, I can't save myself. I've sinned. I've blown it. I know the penalty for sin is death. But they're willing to believe that Jesus came, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, and rose again. And if we believe in him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, you shall be saved. May today be the day of salvation for anybody who might be lost in this congregation. May others come to the altar and say, God, I could be a little bit bolder for you. I've let the world wash out my stance for Jesus, and I want it back. Have your way in their heart. Bless them in this invitation time. Whatever the the desire of your heart for their heart is, Lord, have your way. Lord, decisions will be made. People will, will either say yes to Jesus or no. Draw them to Jesus, I pray. In Jesus Christ's holy name, I pray. Amen. Please remember what we talked about last week. This is the most important part of the service. When God's speaking to somebody's heart, they need to, need, need to come forward and do business with God. And that's between them and God, a protected time. And we need them to be comfortable that this church is going to support them, and not try to guess what they're doing at the altar. So let God have his way, and we'll be glad we did. Brother Sam.
much for your attention, your attendance. Those are still doing business with God. You're free to continue to do so. Uh, speak a kind word about your Savior this week, a kind word about your church. We'll depart from our, uh, our series on prayer this Wednesday, and we'll talk about Homeland Security from the Psalms because of 91101. And uh, God bless you as you go into the mission field. Thanks for being you. Amen. It was good to be here today, wasn't it? Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I can feel the presence of God in the Brother Sweet Spirit here. So let, let's pray uh, that he's best. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the opportunity that we've had to come together as brothers and sisters and worship you. And I pray that everything that was done here today brought honor and glory to you. Thank you for all the blessings you've given us, Lord. And I pray that you will forgive us when we fall short. And Father, please watch over us as we go our separate ways. And please lead, guide, and direct us that we might always be in the center of your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.